there. Relationships are almost always the most difficult aspect of our lives. But what's more difficult than having the relationship is losing the relationship. It's difficult to find somebody who hasn't experienced a breakup or a divorce or a separation from someone that they love. For this reason, it's obvious that heartbreak is an important topic. Before going on, it must be said that it's possible to experience heartbreak without a relationship actually physically ending. In fact, some people live their life inside a relationship in a state of perpetual heartbreak. When this is the case, the breakup has still occurred, but it has occurred internally. To love someone is to include that person as yourself, is to come into a state of emotional oneness. Now we are at our best when we're in this state because it's our most natural state. It means that we are vibrationally matching the frequency of source itself. In contrast, to break up with someone is to become separated. It is the most extreme difference from the source vibration that you can possibly get. Instead of being the presence of source, it is the absence of source. So we are at our absolute worst when we're in that particular frequency. All breakups are essentially a betrayal. A betrayal is the breaking of a presumptive contract or agreement. When we love someone, we enter into a kind of energetic agreement or loose contract to be one. When we experience a breakup, whether it's an actual breakup or an energetic breakup, this agreement is broken. As a result, we feel betrayed. All betrayals of the unspoken oneness agreement in a relationship whether it's emotional withdrawal or cheating or criticism, creates a separation between two people. Why exactly is breaking up so incredibly painful? As we said earlier, to love somebody is to include them as yourself. So to break up with someone, whether you were the one that did the breaking up or whether they were the ones that did the breaking up with you, you are still losing a part of yourself. On an emotional level, a breakup feels like a severing. It feels like a part of you is being severed from the rest of you. Now, as it applies to relationships, it's quite common that hatred is the way that we feel towards people who we have a breakup with. The reason is that hatred is the cover emotion for hurt. What I mean by cover emotions is that your emotional body actually comes with survival mechanisms. Whenever you are in a superbly low vibration, one that could line you up with a negative experience that could threaten your own survival. You have a knee-jerk reaction to move into a higher vibrational state. In psychology, sometimes they call this a secondary emotion. I call it a cover emotion because it exists to keep you from being in the lower vibration, sort of like ice over the top of a frozen lake. Hatred, being the cover emotion from hurt, enables people to stay out of the pain that they're experiencing as a result of the betrayal they feel as a result of that separation from the person that they love. Obviously, when we're in a state of hatred, we are usually in a state of heartbreak, and what needs to be addressed is the hurt underneath the hatred. The heart chakra is the energy center of the body that corresponds to connection. It is the chakra that is concerned with wholeness and love and compassion, among other things. The heart chakra is the unifier. This is why so many of the organs and biological systems associated with the heart chakra are unifying systems, like the circulatory system. They unify the whole body. When we experience the severing or separation inherent in a breakup, the chakra and biological systems associated with it that are the most impacted is the chakra that is in charge of connection, the heart chakra. On a biological level, emotional pain and physical pain involves the same regions of the brain. Many scientists suggest that when painful mental and emotional separation occurs between people, it causes an area of the brain to be stimulated that in turn overstimulates a nerve called the vagus nerve. 
causing pain in the chest. This chest pain is why people say their heart has been broken. It is easy to see how the pain receptors in the body that would be the most affected by loss trauma are the nerves associated with the chakra and biological systems that deal with connection. This, after all, is where the damage is. Before we go on, I'm going to let some of you off of the hook. It's really common in relationships, though none of us want to talk about it, that when things go really south, we start hoping that our partner will just die in a freak accident. Don't worry, a lot of people think that way. The reason is, is that all breakup is a death of something. It's a death of a part of yourself. And when we don't feel like we have the strength to willingly cause a death, we hope it will happen unwillingly or involuntarily. That way we don't have to face the guilt, we don't have to doubt ourselves, and we don't have to feel self-blame on top of the pain of the loss itself. Even if it was the other person who chose to do it, you're going to experience a death of something that is a part of you. What ensues is a grieving process, much like the one that happens when someone we love actually dies. You're not just going to wake up one day and get over heartbreak. Heartbreak is a trauma to the system, and like any other trauma, the body and the system has to go through a healing process to get to a state of wholeness again. You may decide to move on, but that does not mean you have healed anything. Trying to rush the process of healing after you experience a breakup does not work any more than it works to rush the process of grieving after someone dies. That being said, heartache does not have to last forever. It doesn't even have to last for a long time. And the more proactive that you are about your healing process, obviously the faster the healing process is going to go. So what should you do if you experience heartbreak? Before we get into the list, it's important to know that if the breakup was recent and you're still in the shock and the grief of it, stop living your life for this day or this week. Start living for the next five minutes or hour. When life collapses and we're in the wake of a major trauma, we've got to reel it in and only plan and live our life according to short increments. What would make me feel better for the next five minutes? What would feel like relief to do with the next hour? So we're living minute to minute and hour to hour. And we can extend that as time goes on and we feel capable. And now for the list. The first thing is that you do not distract yourself. This is a common thing that people will try to tell you to do, most especially your friends when you're feeling heartbreak. Let's distract ourselves by going hiking. Let's distract ourselves by playing a game. Let's distract ourselves by drinking. This will backfire immensely. You've already lost an aspect of yourself. If you go and bounce out on yourself, which is what you're doing when you're distracting yourself, you're just going to compound the wound that has already occurred. Heartbreak is all-consuming, and it's okay to let it be. Sometimes to get to the other side of something, we have to go straight into it. Recognize that if you have come together with somebody in order to form an attachment kind of relationship with somebody, most likely it is a compensation for an aspect of yourself that you have lost already. Subconsciously, being with that other person makes you feel more whole in some way. We must embark on a journey of restoring our completeness in and of ourselves. We must turn our attention inward and become whole again. Do not mistake this for independence. This is an interdependent universe. Interdependence is not painful. Independence is. Autonomy, on the other hand, is a state of wholeness in and of itself. In a state of wholeness, we do not come together with other people to make up for what is missing within us. To be autonomous, we have to be in a secure relationship with ourselves. We have to take steps to ensure a secure relationship for ourselves with ourselves and we have to take steps to become whole. The worst thing you can do when you're in this phase of heartbreak is to jump right into another attachment type of relationship with someone, especially if this is a romantic breakup that we're talking about. We can't do that straight away without making the trauma that we're experiencing worse. I'm developing a process currently that's called the completion process. It's actually a process which is designed to help us become whole again. Hopefully, by the time you're watching this, I will have completed that process already so that you can find it on the internet and actually add that to your life. 
Part of becoming whole is to come back to yourself, to find yourself all over again. Who am I? What do I want? What do I need? What changes do I want to make to my life? Think back to a time when you were truly happy in an autonomous way in your life. What things were you doing then? Add some of those things back into your life. Often breakups call for starting over as if from square one and going in a whole new direction. Our priorities have to shift. We have to be willing to do that. We have to take the steps to feel like ourselves again because we have lost ourselves. Even the people who decide to end relationships go through a period of feeling lost without the other person. If you are feeling lost, you can look up my YouTube video titled Feeling Lost and 10 Steps to Becoming Found. Three, change up your life so it feels new. This can be as drastic as moving to a whole new city, getting a whole new job, starting a whole new life. Or it can be something as simple as rearranging the furniture in your house, redecorating. We could cook new foods. We could change something about our physical appearance. Changing things in your life around, especially things that remind you of the pain of the loss, is crucial. Don't be afraid to put away the reminders you have of them. This may feel scary because you don't want to lose any more connection with them. But remind yourself, you're not burning the reminder of them, unless you, of course, need to do that to let go. You're just boxing it up so it's out of sight. You can still take it out anytime you want to, or throw it away if and when the time ever feels right. Four, we have to address our negative beliefs, like core beliefs, that have occurred as a result of this pain. Things like, I'm never going to trust anyone ever again, or I can't make relationships work. We especially want to address the shoulds. What causes us extreme amounts of pain when it comes to breakups is the idea that it shouldn't be happening. We should be with this person for the rest of our life. When we think that something should happen and it's not happening, that's a recipe for emotional disaster. So for those of you that want to change these beliefs once you discover what they are, go look at my YouTube video titled How to Change a Belief. Also, look into Byron Katie's work. Her process, which is actually called The Work, is some of the best that I have found when it comes to flipping around your thoughts in a way that you can see a perspective that you didn't see before. Five, ask why. Now, a lot of people who coach you through heartbreaks are going to tell you to avoid asking why, to just drop it all together because it's going to cause you more pain. I could not disagree more. It's crucial that we ask why something happened. The understanding, in fact, will set us free. Not only that, it's important that we learn from every single experience that we have so we don't repeat the same patterns and exact the same mistakes again. Whilst maintaining the understanding that there is always a much more beautiful and positive big picture behind why it ultimately happened, it's crucial that we develop awareness. Even when we say we don't know why something happened, we almost always do know why. It's just that we aren't admitting it to ourselves because it's too painful. Six, people come in and out of our lives for a reason. We may be telling ourselves the story that they were in our lives for a reason, like that they were our soulmate, when in fact they came into our life for an entirely other reason. Stay open to the idea that they have come to give you part of the puzzle and begin to look for what part or parts of the puzzle they may have come to give you. It is very tempting when we feel heartbroken to feel like the world is against us. Looking for the positive things that came as a result of the relationship, including what the relationship caused you to know that you really want, is a great way to get out of the feeling that you have been nothing but harmed. 7. Sit down and figure out what is right with you. When we experience a breakup of any kind, usually our self-worth takes a major tank along with it. We start telling ourselves the story that there must be something that's wrong with us. Not only that, when it comes to breakups, this is especially amplified. Because obviously, if something wasn't wrong with us, this wouldn't have happened. <laughs> we have to shift our focus to our strengths and to the things that make us worth connecting with. If we have a difficult time coming up with this list, we can contact our friends and have them each compile a list about us. Then, with each item or each strength, we have to figure out how that strength helps us in our life, or why it might be beneficial to someone who wants to be in a relationship with us. Eight, feel the support and connection with other people in your life. Find a community. Breakup 
is the most painful thing because it is a loss of connection. Obviously, if we find connection in other ways, we're not going to be starving to death for connection to such an extreme degree. This is a perfect time to work on receiving energy. If you have trouble with receiving, watch my YouTube video titled How to Receive. This will also help you to feel like you are not alone, so anxiety is less likely to be triggered. You may not feel capable of connecting with people in the state of pain that you're in, but it will help you. Because you're suffering from the absence of someone, having the presence of someone does help improve the situation. 9. Think about the best case scenario. When we experience a breakup, we instantly spiral into the worst case scenario because our life is enduring a complete collapse. Instead, we have to think about the best case scenario in our lives, say a year from now. What would we be doing? Who would we be with? What kinds of new aspects would we see in our lives? That's the kind of way we need to start thinking. Because the reality is, a breakup may be a closing of one door, but that means that another door has opened. And just maybe, the door that has opened for you is the one which will let in what you have actually always wanted. 10. Let yourself cry when you feel the urge to cry. Crying is a detoxification of pent-up emotional energy. Suppression is the opposite of healing. Crying may feel embarrassing, but it's important to get over the social stigma and let it out. 11. Relax your body. Relaxing your body relaxes the mind, and relaxing the mind relaxes the body. It's a two-way street. We can use this to our advantage, because often when we're in the middle of a breakup, we can't relax our mind no matter what we try to do. So we can try to relax our body instead. We need to take whatever steps we can to get our body into a state of ease. This means put on a song that positively alters the way you feel, or get a massage, or do yoga, or exercise, or paint, or sculpt, or do breathing exercises specifically for stress, or taking Epsom salt bath. Do anything that would bring your body into a state of ease. 12. Meditate daily. Meditation enables us to release our thoughts so our thoughts can stop. It gives us an extreme amount of relief. This is really important during a breakup. It also allows us to connect with our source aspect, with the spiritual realms. And that enables us to see a bigger perspective. That bigger perspective is, of course, very important when we're living a painful subjective reality. Also, when we meditate, we come into a state of allowing, which is the most healing of all states. 13. Write in our gratitude or our positive aspects journal. When we experience a breakup, the world essentially turns black. We can't see any positive. We can only focus on the negative, and we're spiraling out of control. So one of the best things you can do, especially first thing in the morning, and last thing before you go to bed at night, is to force yourself to write a full page of things that you either feel grateful for, appreciate, or things that feel good to think about, or look at, or experience. When you are in emotional pain, it's best to think small. Let's be honest, the big things in our lives aren't really going so well right now. <laughs> so what we have to do is to focus on the very little things which cause us to feel positive emotion when we think about them, or look at them, or experience them. And be honest. You can only put things on this list that genuinely feel good to put down. Not things you think you should put down because they should feel good right now. When we do this before bed, our sleep will be better and we will wake up in the same vibration we went to sleep in, which is improved. When we wake up and do this, we set the stage for the rest of the day. This is especially important if we're going through heartbreak because when we're heartbroken, we usually wake up and the heartbreak hits us like a semi-truck again. And the rest of the day we spend just trying to cope and stay alive instead of living. 14. Practice the art of self-love. Now I'm fully aware that when you're going through a heartbreak because you've lost love, and somebody like myself comes in and says love yourself, it feels horrible because it's almost like I'm telling you you're going to be alone for the rest of your life. But that's not what I'm saying. This universe operates according to the law of attraction. It is like a big mirror. So whatever vibration we hold is reflected by the universe. So the more love we send in our own direction, the more people will come into our life who will also send love in our direction. Self-hurt is behind self-hate. So loving yourself will also prevent you from hurting yourself. 
which, to add injury to injury, is a common side effect of heartbreak. I've written a book called Shadows Before Dawn, which is a book that teaches you how to love yourself. It's scheduled for release in May of 2015. So hopefully by the time you're watching this, that book will be released. If you'd like to learn how to love yourself, pick up a copy of the book. 15. We need to allow ourselves to gain closure. So right now ask yourself, what do I need in order to gain closure? Figure out what loose ends are preventing you from moving forward in your life. Maybe you feel like you need to apologize. Maybe you feel like you need to ask why. Maybe you need to find out how to avoid the same mistake in the future. Maybe you have to give something away that you've been keeping. Maybe you have to have a symbolic ceremony. Let yourself gain closure in whatever way you need to. 16. Seek out therapy. There are so many types of therapies that you want to do research to find which one resonates the most with you. But just for your information, there are entire therapy modalities which deal entirely with relationship loss. If you have lost your secure attachment to somebody because a relationship has ended or there's been a breakup regardless of whether your relationship has ended or not, a therapist can actually be a secure attachment figure for you. This is, in fact, the main reason why therapy is so therapeutic. We need to be able to get help when we feel like we need help, and heartbreak is a valid reason to seek out help. Allow yourself to feel sorry for your loss. The people who stay stuck in heartbreak are usually the people who never fully let themselves grieve or feel sorry for the loss. In reality, we are all made up of the same energy. We are all a part of a unified energetic field. And so we cannot really lose anyone or anything. We can only create the illusion that we have lost that particular thing. Ultimately, there is no coming and there is no going. You cannot lose your interconnectedness because it is the basis of all that is. Pain is temporary. It doesn't feel like it when you're in the middle of it, which is why pain is so incredibly excruciating. But your pain is like a crying child. Treat it like that. Your pain is not trying to hurt you. It is instead the one that is hurting, and it is crying out for your help. Have a good week. Thank you.